Hey YouTube, this is the Robinhood Investor. Hope you had a great week of trading. As always, I really appreciate your support. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn about investing, subscribe to this channel. Today, I'm going to talk about my Robinhood portfolio. Currently, I'm at $211,392. Cash position of $8,118. And I also have another $30,000 in cash in a high yield savings account. So I can easily deploy into the market when there are opportunities to buy. And most of my portfolio is in US equities and the market has been rallying since the, uh, the past couple months. Scrolling down a bit, first position is VOO, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. This tracks the S&P 500 index. It's a fairly low expense ratio has a high liquidity and is a very easy way to diversify into the US market. Next is Vanguard Information Technology ETF. This tracks the tech sector, has a fairly low expense ratio, also high liquidity and easy way to diver diversify into the technology sector. Next is Schwab Large Cap ETF, very similar to VOO. Next is SPY, Spider S&P 500 ETF, very similar to VOO as well. IVV, same thing. All right, first stock is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL, which is a consumer electronics company. iPhone makes up 60% of the revenue, and it's uh, between greater mar uh, smartphone penetration in emerging markets and repeat customers. There's a lot of opportunity for growth for Apple, and it's a good dividend play. And as you can see, past year performance, it's up almost 40%. Next is Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT, which is Enterprise and Consumer Business Solutions Company. Has a monopoly position in various areas like Windows, operating system, and Office that help serve um, and drive growth in the Azure cloud computing position. And public cloud is widely considered to be the future of enterprise computing and Azure is a leading service. And for those of you who have been following the, the recent news, um, Microsoft won the contract over Amazon for the DOD, Department of Defense, which is huge. And uh, Amazon is trying to challenge that position. Next is Alibaba, ticker symbol BABA, which is an e-commerce and tech company based in China. Uh, this benefits from the ongoing shift of China's digital e-commerce from consumer to consumer to business to consumer. And as of March, the annual active consumers on the China retail's marketplace reached 674 million, which is more than 45% of China's total population. And if, if you guys have been following uh, on Singles Day, they did record-breaking record numbers in terms of sales. Next is Visa, uh, payment processing so, uh, solution company. Has a large market share in the industry and its scalable nature of the business allows the company to improve its already impressive margins. There's also plenty of growth opportunities in the e-payment space, which surpassed cash payments on a global basis several years ago. Next is Alphabet, or parent company of Google. They dominate the online advertisement space. And as the number of online users and usage increases, so will digital ad spending, which helps Google. So this is Class C shares. I also have Class A shares. Next is Johnson & Johnson, which is in the medical devices, pharmaceutical, and consumer goods space. They have uh, diverse healthcare segments, uh, which help protect Johnson Johnson from downturns in the economy. And this offers a defensive growth opportunity with steady and growing dividend. Next is NVIDIA, which provides GPUs for gaming, cars, and mobile computing, also data centers. The increasing complexity of uh, graphics processors provides a, a barrier to entry for most potential rivals as it's difficult to match uh, NVIDIA's large R&D budgets. Also, the growth of 
AI and deep learning that rely on these chips present massive growth opportunities. So I think this is a very good long-term buy and hold. Next is Amazon, which is an e-commerce and cloud computing company. They dominate North America's online retail category and their portfolio of electronics include Kindle, Fire TV, Echo, and other Alexa-enabled products, which help the consumer acquisition and retention promote Prime membership engagement, as well as Amazon Web Service capabilities. Next is Boeing, which is an aerospace and defense uh, company. Um, and as spending for commercial airplanes increased from continued air travel demand and strong leasing market, I think Boeing's going to benefit from these growing opportunities. And their new services unit will succeed in capturing higher margin aftermarket services, and spare parts sales, um, which is also going to increase their revenue growth and profits. Next is McDonald's, which is world's largest restaurant chain by revenue in over 100 countries. McDonald's has a positive strategic move, including refranchising more than 4,000 units of reducing and reducing uh, annual operating expenses. And they have a really good dividend of over 2%. So this is a very good dividend stock. And I know recently their their CEO was replaced. And so we'll see, I'll continue to follow this company and see how they continue to shift in terms of their strategy. Next is Tencent, which provides internet related services and products, entertainment and artificial intelligence in China and globally. They're also online um, gaming business will which will continue to dominate based on its strong distribution and capability and R&D investment. They also invest in uh, content, cloud, and digital finance, which will lay a strong foundation and drive earnings for the long term. Recently, I think they also partnered with the... I believe it was Nintendo? To grow their their gaming portfolio. Next is Home Depot, which is a home improvement company. Uh, They have a solid distribution and merchandising, which improves the productivity and increased domestic market share in stable housing market environments. Next is United Health, which is doing well uh, providing healthcare products and services. And recently they spiked up 5% uh, due to their uh, administration announcing that there's some updates in the transparency across all of the healthcare companies. And that's why overall healthcare sector uh, surged last Friday. And I think this is a very good long-term buy and hold company just because their their strategy of pursuing scale across multiple healthcare services helps them diversify their portfolio. And they're increasingly creating more synergies across the insurer, provider, and pharmacy pharmacy benefit management segments that result in a meaningful edge across uh, over its peers. Next is Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. Um, it's a great track record of identifying valuable business to invest in. So this includes companies like Apple. Um, and I think Berkshire has been increasing their position in Apple. And that's, that's really helping driving its growth. And just quarter after quarter, they continue to collect dividends and reinvest that back into the portfolio rather than pay out these dividends to their investor. Next is Facebook, which is the parent company, of course, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus Virtual Reality. Um, Their primary revenue source is advertisement um, and their ad revenue per user is growing with more users using the products and increase in usage time. 
showing that the, the value that advertisers see is uh, it's working for Facebook. AT&T, which is one of the world's largest telecom company, it's a really good dividend play. And it's also the parent company of mass media conglomerate Warner Media, making it the world's largest media and entertainment company in terms of revenue. Next is Costco, which operates membership warehouses, selling a wide variety of products. And it has strong customer loyalty with membership uh, renewal rates uh, steadily across 90% in a variety of economic environments. So it's really good customer retention. 3M, which is a conglomerate company that makes a variety of products, uh, continues to benefit from its shared platforms with developed products often ha having multiple applications. And they continue to emphasize innovation with R&D spending. Next is PayPal, which facilitates online payments and money transfers, has plenty of opportunities for growth in electronic payments, and its experience in online payments is a unique asset that is becoming more valuable as e-commerce becomes bigger. Next is PepsiCo, which provides food, beverages, and snacks. Um, the food and beverage businesses has helped its capture uh, synergies in distribution, marketing, and technology, as well as for economies of scale in international markets. Next is Nextera Energy, which is in the utility sector, provides electricity and other energy sources to consumers. Next couple ones are smaller, posi smaller positions, so I'll go over these really quickly. So Baozun, this is like the Shopify China, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, one of the larger se semiconductor uh, companies, Activision Blizzard, Baidu, which is like the, the Google of China, NetEase, Constellation Brands, Yichiyi. Next couple ones are ETFs, so Vanguard Consumer Discretionary ETF, Vanguard Healthcare ETF, uh, Vanguard Industrial ETF, and Vanguard Mega Cap Value ETF. So that's all in my Robinhood portfolio. I continue to um, buy and hold stocks and ETFs, and preferably a good balance between dividend paying stocks and growth stocks. I also plan on increasing my cash position. Currently at $8,100, and, and I have 30,000 in my high yield savings account, but I plan to increase that to 40,000 so I can easily deploy in the market when there's opportunities to buy. That's all for this video. What moves are you making in your portfolio? Comment down below. Remember to use my referral links below and both of us get $20 for using personal capital or free stock for using Robinhood. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to learn about investing, subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.